with the Cold War at full throttle. The United States Air Force was worried that a sudden Soviet attack in Europe would leave American planes with no usable runways to counter the aggression. Enter the Zell, with a zero-length launch. This extraordinary concept explored how to blast a jet fighter straight off the back of a truck with a solid fuel rocket. This footage shows the technology being applied to an F-84G Thunder jet, the first type of aircraft used for this test. The majority of the Zell experiments were thoroughly performed at the U.S.'s flight test center throughout the early 1950s. Although man testing was relatively successful after a few tries, no Zell configured aircraft were ever used operationally, as the emergence of missiles significantly reduced the necessity of airplanes for a nuclear counterstrike. Concerned about the potential destruction of runways due to an unexpected Soviet attack, the Air Force began concocting a new plan, an aircraft launcher that required zero length. As conventional aircraft were heavily reliant on long and smooth runways, it was thought that these structures would be one of the first to be demolished in case of a major conflict. Removing this dependence was a priority for the Air Force. Due to their success with the Matador, the first operational surface-to-surface -surface cruise missile, the Glenn L. Martin Company was chosen to develop the system and conduct strenuous testing at Edwards Air Force Base. The fighter bomber deemed most suitable for the experiments was the straight-wing F-84G Thunderjet. Because boost launches and landings were quite different from one another, Goodyear was also hired to fabricate a large, portable, air-filled mattress. With it, the aircraft would make a low pass, engage with an arresting cable in the air with a tail hook, and then flop onto the mat on its belly. The invention's flight testing phase began on December 15, 1953, with an unmanned EF-84G at Rogers Dry Lake. A successful manned launch took place on January 5, 1954, Test pilot Robert Turner reportedly felt as comfortable as pilots felt on a conventional catapult launch and only sustained a minor injury on takeoff. Another set of manned launches were successfully achieved a few weeks later. However, the aircraft landed normally and not in the Goodyear mattress. The first mat landing took place in January 1954, and it was unsuccessful. The hook on the F-84G from the test severely tore up the mat, and the aircraft was severely damaged as well. The pilot was in the hospital for months with a neck injury. Two further mat landings were performed. Even though the results were not as disastrous as the first landing, the feature still needed a lot of work since it was too dangerous to use. The zero-length launch and mat landing was terminated after 28 launches because they still required a lot of work. The Air Force abandoned the concept for a time in favor of other projects. Even though the mat landings were far too dangerous, the takeoff tests worked. In 1957, the Air Force decided to take up the successful part of the project and merge it with a new and improved project. The idea was to launch a nuclear-armed aircraft from a truck's trailer. The pilot would then bomb his target and bail out over friendlier territory. The F-100 Super Sabre was chosen for Zell, but it was tricky adjusting the project because the F-100 weighed twice as much as the F-84. A bigger booster rocket was needed to get the aircraft in the air. Preliminary tests were conducted with a model structure that simulated the F-100, and the first Zell with an actual aircraft was successful. Sadly, the second launch ended in tragedy when the plane crash-landed in the desert. Fourteen other flights using Zell were performed between March and October of 1958 with satisfactory results. The project was so successful that in 1963, even the German Luftwaffe sponsored similar launch experiments with an F-104G strike fighter. Despite its promise, Zell was never used in actual operations. Only test pilots were ever able to eject out of the rocket booster and into the sky. The idea was striking, but its cost was too high, and the security concerns greatly alarmed the Air Force. The project wasn't deemed practical or worth the risk. The United States Air Force, the Soviet Air Force, and the German Luftwaffe all conducted some sort of zero-length launching. 
However, the Air Force abandoned all projects concerning Zell as guided missiles became more popular and posed a lesser risk for pilots. 